Hi, thank you so much for being here on a Saturday. Hi, thank you, Kathy. It's wonderful seeing you. So we love the movie. And I wanted to know, did you feel the weight of the world on your shoulders when you guys created this movie? Because the book series is a hit. I mean, we've got the entire books in my kiddos um, in room right now. So tell me how you guys took on or tackled the, the movie. Yeah, it, it is an incredible amount of pressure to want to deliver a, a, a film that people enjoy as much as the books. I read them growing up as a kid uh, and then read them to my kids now. So, you know, it's a big uh, blessing and also a big responsibility to be able to tell something that captures the same kind of magic and that idea of unconditional love from the books in a, in a feature like live action movie. Oh, Sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, I, absolutely. I felt all of you sitting on our shoulders and saying to us, "Do not uh, uh, do anything wrong in this in this movie." We we love Clifford, and um, look, we loved uh, uh, Mr. Bridwell, Norman Bridwell, and the work that he did. And unconditional love, you know, is underlying the books something that we felt was very important to make sure we had it in the piece. And we loved it so much that we named a character after Norman Bridwell, who was like he was impish and magical. So um, yes, we, we, we tried to, we wanted it as his books are classics. We wanted this to be a classic. You guys nailed it. It was superb. Thank you. Oh, Aaron, thanks, Kat. Sorry, Aaron Miller from Horsing Around LA. You may go ahead. Aaron Miller from Horsing Around LA. You may ask a question. Oops. Um, okay, I unmuted myself. I was wondering, are they going to be making a sequel to this? Any other Clifford movies after this one? Well, we are right now working um, with uh, working with the writers to decide what our story might be. Um, and um, because of uh, finishing uh, shooting the movie in 2019 and finishing uh, the actual post-production of the movie earlier this year, um, we, uh, we have a, a Emily Elizabeth who's gone from 12 to 14 um, in real life. So we will be making adjustments for that. And um, at, that at this point, that's the only thing I think we know for certain. Monica Young, My Life is a Journey. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being with us this Saturday morning. Uh, my question is for both of you. Um, right now, we are seeing a trend of doing uh, live action movies from cartoons. Uh, what do you think that it was the most challenging part of going, the, not only having Clifford as a puppet or whatever, but just the most challenging part of the acting and directing and producing the movie? I think uh, anytime you go into a live action CG um, world, um, one major challenge is that the actors are going to be acting against something that's not there. So um, I had seen a play called War Horse in New York where they had two guys like puppeteering a horse and that thing, I mean, it looked like a horse. I mean, it was amazing. So I talked to Jordan and we said, you know, we need to come up with a basically a 10 foot version of this, our dog version of Four Horse um, for the actors. So we built a, a giant uh, scale uh, sort of puppet that was, had two puppeteers that could control the head and the mouth. And, and, and they were so good at dog behavior that it gave the actors not just an eye line, like, okay, this is how big a 10 foot tall dog is, or this is how his head is moving in the scene, um, but, but also like emoted behavior so they could actually Feel like they were acting against something and then we pull that out and then we shoot another clean plate shot um and then you know the 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 other burden is just that when you're doing something live action and not cartoon the dog is going to look a little different than the line drawings of, of norman bridwell because what we felt for sure if if we're in a live action universe is that taking a dog that was, I guess, a cartoon and putting it in that world was an extra layer of suspension of disbelief that we felt like was actually gonna disconnect the audience from Emily and, and her. There was just gonna be 
you, you weren't going to bond with it because it, it wasn't real in that world. And so our buy-in is, is, you know, obviously there's just a little red dog that becomes a big red dog and, and it's nothing like it. And with a little bit of magic. So we felt that was enough of that uh, emotional moment. And, and we didn't need to sort of keep it as a cartoon. Anything you would add, Jordan, to that? The only thing I would add to that is um, for audiences that don't necessarily know who Clifford is, um, which are very few people in, in uh, North America, but in other parts of the world, there are some places that don't, that, it, that in translating um, uh, for them and for us in terms of the book, to make him photo real is really lining him up with what we all feel um, for the sweet pets that we have living with us that are part of our families, um, whether it's a dog or a cat or a bird or whatever, um, as long as he was photo real and as long as his behavior was absolutely what a puppy would be, um, whether he is, you know, this big as he is in the beginning of the movie or whether he's 10 feet tall, that we recognize him. And as we watch the difficulties that he gets in, we understand what that would feel like if it was our dog. And um, we wanted the whole audience to relate to him losing his family at the beginning of the film and then ultimately gaining a new family by the end of the film. Um, so um, that's all I would add. Well, it worked really good. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Monica. Erin, Rockin' Mama. Hi, thank you so much. We um, really loved the film. Um, my question is, um, what were some of the like funnier moments or like if there are any outtakes or anything? Because I imagine trying to act against like just kind of like what you're talking about, this imaginary dog. I imagine there'd be like some funny like moments. So I think um, my the highlights for me, comic what comedy wise was having Keenan on set. That was our last day shooting. And he's like, he's so funny and such a sweet guy in real life. And I would say half that scene maybe is, is his ad libs in addition to the dialogue. So like all the, you know, coo, 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 you know, like, click, 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 like all that stuff was not scripted. And that, that was him just like, like riffing. And, and so that was very funny. Um, and then a, a second time, it, it actually didn't involve the, the dog but it was something that Jack came up with on his own that I just thought was so hilarious is when they were fighting in the, in the deli and they were choreographing all that stuff. And he starts doing the salt bay thing with the, uh, uh, the thing he just brought that out of nowhere. He didn't, he didn't even tell us that he was going to do that. So that, that was like one of those great surprises that had everybody rolling. Yeah. I thought the deli sequence was, uh, was very funny that way. I also thought that, remember that we were working with a, a puppet um, uh, as Walt was talking about and um, uh, a big puppet with two puppeteers and all of that in a room. And when we were doing the moment where Clifford licks the little pug uh, dog and then pulls him into his mouth and you know his cheeks are going and all of that's happening and then spits him right back out again. Um, of course, that wasn't happening um, in the room, and um, everybody was looking every which way um, as to where that dog was going or where he was flying, and Walt sort of had to step in there and really get them, like uh, conducting an orchestra, having to get each of the characters who were watching it happen have the right eye line um, as that was happening. I was sort of quietly laughing in the background um as that was going on so there are always moments um and jack for sure when jack does early on when he slips over the uh shopping cart to the guy with the plastic bottles um that you know it's jack doing his own stunt um he did it a few times i think walt made him do it two or three more times just to play with him um and um you know there were just funny moments throughout so thank you thank you karen Selena, sitting pretty with Selena. Hi, good morning. Uh, Clifford was great as expected. I remember it from my childhood, introducing it to my children. It was great. Um, I would like to know, how was it filming in New York City? I mean, the energy of the city is its own entity in addition to filming. So can you elaborate on the yeah, experience? Yeah, that's a great question. It, 
when when we started the movie, um, we you know I was such a big fan of the Paddington films, and I thought that they made London such a great character. And I said, you know what? Let's let's go into this trying to aspire to that and make New York as big a character as they made London. And let's let's celebrate what's unique about New York and and try to give it like our you know because it is such a great American city. Let let's find out what makes it special. And so. When we decided um, uh, to pick Harlem as a neighborhood, we just felt like it was it was this bustling, diverse, old school, just like charming neighborhood. And our production designer found um, a street, 154th Street, and um, and it and with these beautiful brownstones on the steps. And then she just painted on this picture, you know, like a magenta door or a lime green shutter, and then. Even down to the cars, if you guys remember the cars, they were all like older cars. So there were no new cars and they were all like kind of in pastel colors. That was just all thought out about. So we, we tried to layer in uh, different stuff and, and, and then show New York and not just like the icons of New York, you know, but, but just neighborhoods in New York that are just so wonderful. So it did, I think it became a bigger metaphor for the, message of the film about mm -hmm. differences and the fact that people are different is what makes us all stronger, especially if we come and kind of embrace that, just like Clifford's different. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, and, and the crews in New York were great, um, but it's, it's a beautiful city to shoot in. And, and we definitely wanted to make that part of a personality of the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, it's a city that has a great and diverse acting base. So we had some wonderful people that we could get locally. We have a lot of Saturday Night Live players with us mm -hmm. um, in the movie. Um, I think about that bridge, you know, using the Manhattan Bridge uh, as it comes over. It's, uh, you know, it was a, a big shooting day with helicopters and everything else. But to, to make sure that what Norman Bridwell, the writer, had originally thought about, about writing uh, a dog the size or even bigger than a horse, to put her on that and to have her riding across the bridge was that sort of fantasy fulfillment that came right out of the books um, yeah. that we wanted to have um, in the picture. And, um, and, and, and as Walt was saying, being in Harlem at 154th, we see Harlem in the movies often as a period piece. You know, whether it's the 40s or the 50s or the 60s, we see it a lot like that. We don't see it today, which is so wildly diverse and and neighborhoods where people all know each other. And, you know, we tried to cast in the same manner. And a lot of actors and comedians who you've seen here or there and may not remember exactly where you, know, you saw Paul Rodriguez or exactly where you saw uh, uh uh, Keenan or or uh, uh, David Allen Greer or you know whoever mm -hmm. um, in that that um, they felt like a family immediately that it felt like a neighborhood that all knew each other and cared about it even when they squabbled they they felt that way so for us that was a real blessing because we wanted it to be um, Emily Elizabeth had left uh, uh, Bridwell Island six months ago and they had moved into Manhattan and we wanted it to be a, a really bustling, alive, beautiful neighborhood. Well, it came together beautifully. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Christina with the Patricios. Hi. Okay, Hi. Kennedy's, Kennedy's gonna ask our question. Oh, good. What are you hoping kids and families take away after watching this movie? Jordan, do you want well, to? Ask I, yeah, I, let, let me let me say that um, two things. Um, one is to be very loyal to the book and and um, Norman Bridwell's um, desires. We wanted to make sure that the love between Emily Elizabeth and Clifford was you could palpable, you could feel it. It was uh, unconditional and. Um, it was learning to love big and and love this big dog, you know, in that way. And that she, as we changed her a little from a six or seven year old and we made her a sort of 11, 12 year old, a tween, um, that, it, that she was facing challenges and he was facing challenges in this new world. 
Um, and we wanted the audience to come away with um, that, that people often see themselves as different and therefore separate and therefore what they don't know so well, they don't like so much. And we just feel that's just nutty and um, that we, we really need to have a much bigger community in the world. And um, so we, that's why one of the things we wanted people to come away with. And also we saw very early on that the fact that he was red and a color of red that people hadn't seen and other than maybe a cardinal bird that hadn't seen in a creature, a dog, a cat, or anything like that, that he might be seen as a little bit of a freak. And he was 10 feet tall and dogs aren't 10 feet tall. And because he was so different, you know, if you will, with that air quotes, um, that um, we wanted the audience to come away and feel like, oh my goodness, we just love him. He's just, instead of being a, just a cute little puppy, he's a really cute big puppy. So that's what we were looking for was that we're all part of one world and one community. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thanks. Carolina, what C says. Hi, thank you so much for being here. Um, growing up, I love Clifford. I love him now. My boys love him now. And my dream was to have a big dog like Clifford. So when looking for, excuse me, Emily Elizabeth, what were you looking for exactly? And what was important to you that um, Darby Camp kind of took over as Emily Elizabeth to kind of transform her into who she is today? Thank you. Um, that's a great question. Um, Darby, I think what we were looking for is um, someone who felt real um, that um, and, and Darby as an actor is very um, lets herself be very vulnerable. There's something totally um, authentic about her, if that makes sense. So, you know, she not only do you kind of just feel for her in general, um, you know, when in some of the scenes, it was hard to actually shoot. Like, I, I just, I think bullying is probably the worst thing in the world. Like, I, I can't think about bullies of any, you know, adult bullies. I can't think kid bullies. It's just, it's awful. So shooting those scenes with her was, was, um, was actually pretty tough. But I think that's what we're looking for is just an emotional uh, authenticity. And, and, and I thought Darby you know, brought that and, and she's relatable and you, you, you buy that, that she's feeling like an outsider and, and just can't fit in. And then in addition to that, she's also, in addition to being a great actor, just super smart, super funny, and just has a innate sort of sixth sense about choices, acting, I think. Yeah, I would completely agree with that. I, I feel, boy, one of the things while we were casting uh, and with Darby is that I would watch her work with Walt a little bit before we shot a test. And um, then they would shoot it and then she would go back and she would go and hold on to her father. Um, and you could see, she actually looks a lot like her dad. Um, and you could see this relationship that the two of them had um, that she, you know, leaves it all on the field, you know, in that moment that she, when she went out there to act, she was really uh, from in an appropriate manner, either very sad, you know, I, he's trying to be small, you know, in the doc scene or whatever it is, or something that brings laughter. And you really feel that she just left all of it right there on the field. And um, I love seeing that father daughter connection. And um, I, it just made me feel like, okay, this is our girl, that, that she was really terrific.